There's nothing like creating a project completely from scratch where you design, animate, and just put everything together yourself. And that's what we're doing in this tutorial. And what we've been doing recently is we're gonna put together a full, cool, creative scene right here in After Effects completely from scratch. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. Welcome to our channel. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Please be sure to destroy that like button because it helps out this channel tremendously. Just destroy that like button. It takes just one second of your time. So this video is gonna be more focused on creating retro 80 style motion graphics right here in After Effects. Uh, we're gonna put together a cool full scene with a really cool you know, animated background using the grid effect along with an awesome title. So we're gonna jump into our tutorial. We're gonna break this up into four different parts and we're gonna get started. All right, and download our project files. They're free and you can follow along. You can use this as a template. I mean, I don't care what you use it for, but you can download it for free. So here we are in our tutorial composition. We're starting completely blank. So the first thing we'll do is we'll set up the background scene. You can see the grids here and these cool lines, very easy to do. So we'll come here to the top and we'll go ahead and create a new solid. We'll call it grid and we'll click okay. And then we'll go to effect generate and we're gonna grab the grid effect. Now I've used this a lot recently because I love this effect now. And we'll come here to the corner point. We'll change this to width and height sliders. And we'll come here to the width. We'll set this up to 150 and we'll set the height to 150 as well. So we'll get these squares in here and we'll come here to the color and we can change this to a really cool, maybe purplish type color here. You can do whatever color you want. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna tr turn this into a 3D layer. All right, and we'll hit R on keyboard for rotation and we'll come here to the Y rotation and we'll set this to 90 degrees. And then we'll hit P on keyboard for position and we can just slide this over here to the left. I'll zoom out and that's cool. Now what I want to do here is actually grab this grid layer and go to layer solid settings and I want to bring the height down to maybe like 600 ish here. And this will kind of just close up the top just like that. And I think that's good because we want to be able to create a box here. So what we'll do here to expand this is come here to effect, uh, stylize, we'll grab motion tile. And I just overuse this effect, but because it works, it's just awesome. So we'll come here to output width and we'll go ahead and expand this. And you see this will expand out the sides. One thing you'll have to adjust is the anchor here because you'll see that the lines may not be exactly perfect. So you come here to like the X and you can expand the line so it doesn't look like a you know an awkward cut and then what we'll do is we'll come here to the tile center and we'll add a keyframe for that and we'll move to the end of our animation you know end of our timeline and we'll just go ahead and increase the x value up to about 2000 here for the motion tile and this will animate the side and it'll create movement in our scene then let's come here to effect stylize and we're just going to grab glow and we'll take this effect we'll just duplicate it and set the glow radius up to like 120. Cool. All right, so it's a small glow effect, but it works. So now what we'll do is take our grid layer and we'll come here to edit, duplicate, and you just position this over to the other side of our scene. You can bring up the title save so you'll match that exactly where it was on the other side. All right, so now what we'll do is take one of these grid layers, we'll duplicate it, and we'll bring it here to the top, and we'll just go ahead and reset the motion tile effect, and we can just delete the keyframe for now. And we'll hit R on keyboard for rotation, set the Y rotation back to zero, and the X rotation to 90 degrees. And we'll hit PR keyboard for position. We'll bring this to the top and recenter it back in the middle of our comp. And we'll come here to the output height and we'll go ahead and expand that out. And we'll just reposition this into Z space. Then you can come up here to layer solid settings. And you can close in on the width of this layer to close up the sides and expand the height if you want to. And then as before, you can add a keyframe for tile center, move to the end, and this time you'll animate the Y value to go up to about 2000. And then when you're done, take your grid layer, duplicate it, and bring it down to the bottom to create the floor. So the next thing we're going to do is create these really cool glow lines that go down our grid here. So very easy to do this. We are using a free plugin called Saber. I'll link it in the description. You probably have heard of it. So what we'll do is come here to layer new solid, and we should call it light one. If you want, make comp size, click OK. And we'll grab the pen tool here. And all we're going to do is turn off this layer real quick. We'll lock the other layers so that only this new layer is selected. And we're just going to create a mask here at the two, you know, where the two grids meet each other like this. So a straight line. And you can fix that up like that. And then we'll come here to Effect, Video Copilot, and we'll grab Saber. So amazing that they give this away for free. It's awesome. Come here to Preset, and we're just going to set this to Neon. And where is it? There it is. And make sure your layer is turned back on. And what we'll do is come here to the Customize Core. And we'll set the core type to layer mask. And that will take the shape of the mask that you created. And we'll toggle through some modes. We'll set the blend mode here to screen. And we'll just come here to the core size, maybe bring this down to one and bring down the glow intensity by a little bit so it's not, you know, that intense. 
So go ahead and duplicate that line and readjust the mask to finish out your scene like this. And then we just want to create a quick rectangle here. So we'll just duplicate one of the lines. We'll delete the current mask that we have here. And we'll grab the rectangle tool here at the top and we'll just close out the tunnel that we've created with a rectangle mask like this. Awesome. And we'll make sure this rectangle box line is underneath our four original lines. So this is how you can create a really cool, you know, down the hallway effect here instead of After Effects. And before we move further, and before we move further in this tutorial, if you want to create really cool full motion graphic scenes here in After Effects, it can help you save time with our brand new motion graphics pack for After Effects called Pulse. So this is our 150 motion graphic extension right here for After Effects. We call this pack Pulse because we have these really cool designer, you know, full screen motion graphics for you know, typography, Instagram stories, cool animated backgrounds, lower thirds, and even long form promos. But how this pack works is aimed to help you save time. So for example, we can come here and apply a template that we like, and it applies this full animation into our active project. We can double click the composition, and we go into each title layer, and we'd easily change out our titles. And you can quickly change the colors of every single template in here with a click of a button to whatever color palette that you need and the animation will update in your main composition. So there's a ton of other full screen elements that you can use for vertical videos or for you know landscape motion graphics. So if you're looking to save hours of time on every project you work on while producing awesome work, you can take a look at any packs we have off our website. I will link them below if you do pick up anything. You will be supporting our channel, so thank you very much. Okay, so before we jump into this title that we'll create here, I wanna go ahead and add the other effects to really just tie that together the scene right now because this by itself is pretty boring and bad. So what we'll do is come here to the top, we'll grab an adjustment layer. So go layer, new adjustment layer, and we'll go to effect, stylize, we'll grab glow, set that glow radius to 90. So it'll just kind of glow out the scene by a little bit and that's nice. And then we'll go ahead and create another adjustment layer. And this time we'll go to effect, blur and sharpen, and we're gonna grab a camera lens blur. We'll set this up to maybe 18 on the blur radius, uh, check on repeat edge pixels. And we'll come here to the top and we'll grab the ellipse tool. And from the center, what we can do is hold down control on our keyboard and maybe shift if you want. And we'll draw a mask like this. We'll set the mask to subtract and you'll just hit F on your keyboard for mask feather and you'll feather this out. All right, and that's gonna soften up the edges like that. And I think that looks great. All right, we'll go ahead and create another adjustment layer and we'll go to effect stylize. We'll grab CC vignette and we'll set this vignette up to maybe like 230 ish like that. And it'll just kind of darken down the edges. And then we'll come here to effect color correction. We'll grab curves to this and what we'll do is come here to the bottom curve. And we'll bring this up and that'll brighten up the entire scene here. And we'll add a point here because this will crush down the blacks a little bit. And we'll add a point over here to create this nice S curve. So this will be a nice way to you know, control the brightness of the scene and we'll come here to the blue channel and we can just bring this up by a little bit and this will blow out the scene by a little bit and then we'll go ahead and create another adjustment layer and go to effect noise and grain and we'll add noise to this and we'll set that noise up to maybe 20 percent and one thing i want to do is come here to layer new solid and instead of creating a pure black background i'm going to create a, you know an off gray you know off black background very dark click ok and bring this to the bottom and this will make a big difference with the noise and everything involved so these four adjustment layers will make a huge difference in our work. And once we add our title in here underneath these adjustment layers, it's going to look awesome. All right. So now we'll go ahead and create the title. I just typed out a very simple title layer here. So just whatever you need to say. And once you have a title in here, go to layer pre-compose and you can just call it title placeholder and click OK. So what we'll do first here is duplicate our title and we'll just turn it off for now. We'll come here to the bottom layer and we'll come here to effect generate and we'll grab fill and we'll set this color to black. Then we're going to effect perspective and then we're going to grab bevel alpha and we'll set the edge thickness up to four and the light intensity to one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to come here and create a new composition right here and we'll just call it map. We'll click OK. And we're going to create a completely custom scene here. So go ahead and create a new solid and we can call it gradient one. And we'll come here to effect generate and we'll grab gradient ramp and we'll select maybe a nice purpley color here and we'll go here to keep that white if we want. And one thing we'll do is come here to the top, grab the rectangle tool, and we'll just create a mask down here, like so. And we'll grab our gradient ramp, grab that top point, and bring down that purple. And, you know, that should be okay. And hit F on keyboard for mask feather and feather this out. And you'll see why we'll do that here in a second. So then we'll go ahead and create another solid, and we'll just call this hills, and click okay. And we'll come here and grab the pen tool here. And all we're going to do is just going to create some really smooth, jagged, I guess that made no sense, but some hills here, and it doesn't have to be perfect at all. Just like that. 
perfect. Close that mask up. We'll make sure that this layer is underneath the gradient like so. And, you know, we can move the gradient down a little bit. Perfect. And then we'll go ahead and create another solid. We'll call this one gradient two. I'm coming here to effect generate and we'll grab another gradient ramp. This time around, we'll do like maybe a nice light blue here. And this time around, maybe we'll do like a darker blue here at the top. And we'll come here to the bottom and we'll do like a nice light blue. And we'll bring this layer to the bottom. Keep this light color here at the top like that and that looks great. So then we, for our hills layer, we'll come here to effect the store and we'll just grab a quick turbulent display to this. And where it says evolution, all click the stopwatch, we'll type in time, asterisk, 100. And I'll add just a little bit of animation to this and that's cool. Okay, so now we're done with this layer. All right, back in our main composition, what we'll do is we'll bring that map layer, that map composition into our main comp right above our first title placeholder. And we'll change the track mat here to alpha mat, so it'll only take place of that title there. And we'll hit our keyboard and we'll scale this down, like to maybe right here. And then we'll go to effect, stylize, and we'll grab motion tile once again. And we'll increase the output width and check on mirror edges. Then we'll go to effect stylize, we'll grab CC glass, make sure this is above the motion tile effect. Come here to surface, change that property to red, set the softness to 40, the height to 50, and displacement to negative 400. And we'll come here to the light layer, and we'll set the light intensity up to 120. Alright, and then we'll come here to the placeholder that is being turned off right now. And then we'll go to effect stylize, we'll grab CC glass again, open up surface, change the property to alpha, Go to softness, set that to 50. Go to height, set that to 15. And displacement to negative 150. And then we'll go to effect distort and we'll grab CC bobbly lies. Ugh, I butchered that. Um, anyway, so we'll come here to blobbiness and we'll come here to property and we'll set this to alpha. The softness to three and the cutaway to five. Beautiful, so now that's starting to really look like an awesome title here. And then what we can do is go to layer new uh, null object and we can, you know, parent all three of these title layers to our null object, pick whip with that. And you can do a quick, you know, maybe scale animation, has on keyboard for scale. And you can make the title a little larger and move forward in time and just have it scale down or do whatever animation that you want. And that will add a nice little, you know, movement to your title. Uh, do what you want with that and for some finishing touches you can duplicate the bottom title layer come here to the bottom layer completely delete everything and just go to effect perspective and add a quick drop shadow to this you know maybe you could duplicate this and then you know increase the softness by a little bit and increase the opacity here and we'll duplicate it one more time and that will help separate the title from the background so when it's all said and done, you can have a really cool scene like this just by following these techniques and you can build your own, you know, retro 80s, I don't know, crazy scene right here inside of After Effects. So it looks like these motion graphics could have been created 40 years ago, but they were created here in 2021 and you did it. So hope you enjoyed this After Effects tutorial. If you're new to our channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button because we post multiple post-production tools every single week right here on the channel. Uh, you can also hit me up on my Instagram. We're posting, you know, post-production tutorials on there as well. And always be creative.